Um, this, uh, you know, what this series is on, right? What did our pastor uh, start last week? Was it last week or the week before? Evangelism, more specific. The gospel, guys. It was the, the gospel. The gospel, the gospel. Okay, the gospel. Um, so yeah, we we're gonna touch on that. Let's go to uh Luke 15. Let's go to Luke 15. Luke chapter 15. Favorite person. That's my favorite, favorite person, man. Luke 15, sorry. New Bible, you go slower. You don't know where stuff is. All right, Luke 15. Um, I didn't even know. What, what, what version is this? Okay. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Uh, let me see. <laughs> All right. Let's pray, y'all. Let's pray. You know, you know when, uh, whenever you're about to uh, eat some food, you might bless it. So this this is some this is some food right here. Feed your spirit. Let's pray. Father, thank you for fellowship. Thank you for time in your presence. We pray that as we go through your word, give us understanding. Help us understand. Let us not leave confused. You're not the author of confusion. And so uh, have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 15, y'all. Luke 15, today, today's uh, topic is it's not too late. So we're going to read um, from eleven from verse 11. Okay. If, if it's cool, you can have, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That version is fine. Um, okay, so Christ is talking. And he's uh, talking to some people. And so many times when Christ wants to explain something, he might give a metaphor um, just so you can understand the spiritual thing. So here we go. Uh, Luke 15, 11. And he said, Christ said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them, the younger son, said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. What does that mean? What's another word for that? A modern word. Okay, inheritance. There we go. There we go. Yeah, inheritance. Good one. Uh, he said, give me, give me my inheritance, daddy. Now, it's interesting when you, when you ask for the inheritance and, and, and your father's not dead. He asked for it kind of early. He said, give me the, uh, the inheritance that's coming to me. And what did the dad do? Loving father. Well, it is his. So, and he, it says, and he divided his property or his, you know, his inheritance or his substance between them, both sons. Remember, he had two sons, younger and older. The younger one asked for the inheritance early. He gave both of them. Fair father. Verse 13, not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. So he dipped. He said, oh, my goodness, this is some good money. This is some good substance. And uh, this is what people do sometimes. You know, the Lord may bless them with something and they leave him. And they go to a far place, far from, far from God. And there, guess what? He squandered his property uh, in reckless living. So all the money his pops gave him, he spent it. You know what I mean? Like, let's say your dad gave you 5K. 2K, 1K, and you just go to Las Vegas or something, or you know, Jamaica, and you just, you just splurge, you just use all the money in reckless living. And there's some other stuff that the guy did. He was sleeping around with, I think, with prostitutes and stuff. Um, we see that later in the, in the chapter. So he, he spent all the money with reckless living, verse 14. And when he had spent everything, when he ain't have nothing, a severe famine arose in that country. And he began to be in need. That's good timing right there. You know, when things go bad, when you're bad, that's good. It's good when things around you start falling apart, when you're not behaving. That's good. You don't want it the other way around. That's dangerous. When you're living bad and life seems good, 
Oh, man. Uh, that's dangerous. You want things to go bad. You want to, you know, you want your hand to burn when you touch the stove if it's hot. You want to feel the, you don't want to have no consequence. You want to be like, oh, you, it, it can get real bad. So anyway, this famine was good timing. Uh, he, he began to be in need. Verse four, uh, verse, sorry, verse 15. So what did he do? He went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and that citizen sent him into the fields to feed pigs. There's an issue here. Many times when things go bad, we might not go to God. He went to a citizen. He went to man first. And not just any citizen. He went to somebody that had substance. Because if you got a field, it says fields with an S, okay? A citizen of that country, you know somebody is a citizen of the country, they know something about the country. They actually been there for a minute. And many times when things go bad, we may call on man, a man that has money for help. We got to remember, he, you know, he could have went back home right here, but he didn't. And guess what he was doing? He was feeding pigs. And look at verse 16. And he was longing, man, to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. I mean... He was going to eat the slop. You know, have you seen pig food? I'm not trying to disgust you, but have you seen pig food? Pig food don't look so good. It, it looks like some upchuck. Y'all know what that is? Y'all use that word? It looked like some upchuck. That's what pig food looked like. It said, he, he, it didn't say he was considering. What did it say? Longing. It's like, what? Like, can you imagine looking at upchuck? Oh, I, I need that. It's like, what? You know it's real bad when you get to that point. When you when you want to eat stuff that look like it's already been eaten. 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 Whoa. <laughs> you know? That's real bad. Now, that's what happens when you leave the father. You'll find yourself doing stuff you never thought you'd do. And you got to check your life to see if you're doing stuff that five years ago you couldn't see yourself doing this. You got to reflect. You know, self-reflection is good. Um, no one gave him anything. That's good. That's good. Because if someone did, he'd probably stay out there. Look at verse 17. But when he came to himself, that man woke up. He said, wait a minute. How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? And I, But I perish here with hunger? Nah, verse 18, I will rise, I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Verse, uh, sorry, verse 19, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. Verse 20, and he arose. That means he was sitting down or laying down. And that's usually the best time, you know, you sit down, you lay down. That's when you think, you know, reflect. Think about your life. Think about your life. Where, where are you going in this life and the next? Where are you going? And he arose and came to his father. Now watch this, y'all. It's beautiful. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Now remember, this father gave little, little, little Johnny, his son, some money. And Johnny said, I'm out. He said, I never seen this money before. And you know, money, money, money can, <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about money too much today, but money can mess you up. You, why are you walking different, bro? Because you got because you got a couple hundred in your pocket. You, you, oh, you're going into the store looking confident now. There's no window shopping no more, huh? Just because you got little money. And maybe a refund check. Now you walk different. Or somebody disrespect you like, huh? Why? Because of money? No. All your confidence should come from who you have, not what you have. 
Okay, what's inside of you? Okay, I'm, and I, this happened to me before, you know, years ago. Had some money. Some money to do make if you're not if you're not sensible, money will make you do some stupid stuff. It says when he he arose, got up, and his father saw him how far a long way off. That means his father was looking. Remember, his father got a field now. His father was looking, and he was waiting for him. Look, and what did his father do when he saw him? His father ran. His father ran to him. And I've said this before, God will not run after you, but he'll run to you. When the son left, he didn't run after him. He said, oh, no, where are you going? No, 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 no. He, he didn't do that. But when he was coming back, he ran to him. And, you know, if, you, if you're in any kind of sin, any kind of mess, if you turn away, if you come to yourself, Okay, and turn away from that and take just take one step to the Father. He'll run to you. Remember, he said, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh to you. And he's waiting for us to come back home if we've left. So it was a long way off. He ran, embraced him, and kissed him. And look at, look at, look at this, uh, look at verse 21. And the son said to him, you know, he, he didn't change his plan, by the way. He could have, oh, he just hugged me? Oh, he just kissed me? Oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm back. No, he still felt humble. He said, the son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. The love of God should make you confess. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Oh, but the father, that's beautiful. But the father, verse 22, but the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand or on his finger and shoes or sandals on his feet. Verse 23, and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. Now, what did he do, y'all? When he first saw me, he ran, he kissed him. He, 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 he embraced him, he, he kissed him. And what did he do? He said, bring what? The best robe. So he changed them first. And then what did he do? Put a ring on his hand. Then he showed ownership. He's mine. And then what did he do? Shoes on his feet. Now he can support him. And that's the process that God uses. And then after that, they celebrated. Not until all that happened and they celebrated. Until he was changed. <laughs> until you're changed. Don't, don't, don't celebrate unless you're changed. And he showed ownership. And he put shoes on his feet. And shoes support you. And that's what God will do. He'll change you first. If you come to him, he'll change you. It'll change you. Then he said, bring the fattened, the, fattened, the fattened calf and kill it. He said, the fattened calf. There was only one of them. There was only one calf that he had that was fattened. Bring the. That's a picture of the only son. It's a picture of the only son of God. When the father sacrifices the one thing that he has so he can get uh, to celebrate with his son. That's a picture of Christ's sacrifice. Sacrifice. He said, bring the fattened calf, not a fattened calf, the. We're going to stop there. We're going to stop there. Right, let's, let's go through a few things and we'll kind of just talk about this. He had two sons, an older and a younger. The younger said to his father, give me, pretty much give me money. Give me gold, give me silver, give me some treasure. And then the father didn't just give him, he gave both of them. And you'll realize in this life, if you pay attention, many times, even those that don't ask will receive. Even those of, of God's children, 
They don't ask. They'll receive. The other son ain't asked for no money or nothing. He, he still got. And many times, the person who's not seeking for those riches will get them. Many times. And then many times, the person who does seek them and gets them leaves the father. They leave. I remember, I remember one person, very, very prayerful, you know, waking up in the morning, praying, you know. And anyway, long story short, uh, this person got some money. And uh, they started doing something. They started uh, chilling with the pigs. They started doing stuff that they wouldn't have done before. This is the gospel. Both sons started off as sons. And we all were sons and daughters at one point. Some of us left, though. We all left in Adam. Some of us came back. We were all sons and, and, and daughters of God at one, in the beginning. Because all of us were in Adam. And whatever Adam was, we were. Because we all came from him. And that's why we're all born in sin initially. Because Adam sinned. And sin became in his DNA. And so if you come from somebody that has sin, you got sin in you too. If, you, if you're born from an Ethiopian, it don't matter how many, how many generations down the line, you got Ethiopian in you. And so we were all sinners. Some of us may still be. But then some of us came back. Came back home. And that's what we should do. It's not too late. It's not too late because you can breathe. It's not too late. You need to, you know, Paul said something. I've died to the world and the world has died to me. He said, I've lost interest in the world. And the world has lost interest in me. We need to be able to say that. I, I'm, not, I'm not chasing... I, I told y'all, you know, I, I told y'all, I just wanna, I, I, I can be a funny guy. I, I can be a funny guy. But I tell you one thing, and I, I'm, I'm pretty serious, okay? I can get real serious. I'm very serious about my Christian walk. I told you who I used to be, if you were here when I told my story. Uh, little gang growing up, you know, women, Sent to military boarding school, you know, nonsense. I wasn't the smoking type or drinking type. I was the, the ladies, you know. And uh, long story, I'm not gonna go through all the details, but long story short, I, I turned. I turned away. And I came back. And now there's some things that I know I, I do. And many people won't do. I live this way. I'm not talking about diet and all that. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about that. I know I know how I have a some some <laughs> <laughs> I know I have somewhat of a strict diet. I know that, but that's that's only because I'm I'm honestly, it's only because I'm an athlete and I and I learned some stuff and I was like, oh, it's better for my body. That's that's really the only reason. And honestly, on a, on a more serious note with the whole diet stuff, first of all, let me, let me say this, because <laughs> uh, this is what Christ said about, about, about food. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out. Okay? Just because you eat cow, steak, grass, okay? It don't matter. That don't make you more holy. Okay? I think we read yesterday, well, some of us, the men fellowship, uh, Pretty, I'm, I'm paraphrasing First Timothy. Pretty much, bro, holiness is not in meat. It's not in, it's not in chicken. It's not because you don't eat, oh, don't kill the duck. What? Kill the duck if you want. That's not, that's not holiness. 
Okay, now there is a ruthless way to kill a duck, but that's that's another that's not a that's not a point. But it's not about oh I ate I ate pork and now I'm defiled. I, I had chicken. No, it's about what comes out your mouth. When somebody disrespects your family, what do you say? Do you know who I am? Well, who are you? You're supposed to be dead. You know, Christ. I mean, Paul said, "It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me." Okay. But on a more serious note, with the whole diet stuff, I'm, I'm, I throw this in there now that I've laid the foundation that what you eat doesn't change your spirituality. Okay, <laughs> so don't think someone's more holy or no, no, no. But what you eat can can reveal something about you. What you eat does not affect you spiritually, but you know it affects you. That's right. And many times, if someone's in discipline with their diet, they're in discipline. You won't find somebody that's not a procrastinator in this thing, but then they're, they are in this. Thing. No, no, no. You're just a procrastinator. If somebody's in discipline, and they'll show, and I'll tell you one thing you can do, I'm not trying to convert nobody. <laughs> one thing you can do, even though I have a few, you know, converts. One thing you can do, speaking of the angel, <laughs> uh, one thing you can do is actually change your diet for a month. No, that's, that's, that's hard for many people. Change your diet for a week. Not so you can, you know, just so you can reveal, it, it'll reveal yourself to you. If you can't say no when your belly says yes, if you can't say, then it's not about food, it's not about losing weight. There's a deeper issue. Another thing, it's just now, this is just another thing. Now, these things are supposed to just help you reveal yourself to you. Some people don't know themselves. So, oh, I'm humble. Oh, I'm nice. You don't know. You mean, stank attitude. You think you're nice. Anyway, another thing you can do, try. Try this, y'all. If you drive, obey all the laws. <laughs> that man. <laughs> try. Don't say, oh, the speed limit is 55. 59. Don't say, oh, 65. 72. Don't do that. Do live, do follow all of them. If it's a stop sign, don't not don't don't do this rolling stuff. No, 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 no. Mm, don't <laughs> dang. <laughs> Hey, you're not the only one. No, no, no. You, people laugh. You're not the only one. Don't do that. Stop at the stop sign. How come you do it when you take a test? Then you don't, you don't do it after you take the test. How come you do it to get the license? Then you, when you get the license, you don't. What's that? Hey, hey, on a deeper note, I know it's funny, but hey, that's not right. That's not right. That shows that when the law's around or when it's time to be, get judged, you straighten up. But then when the, when the judge ain't looking, when the law, when the 5-0 ain't around, when the popo is nowhere in sight, I'm not in sight, shoot. You can't see me. What is that? There's some people, it, remember, now, I used to do this. Okay, let me, let me just say this first because people feel like, oh, you perfect. No, no. I used to go 100. I used to go over 100. I'm not going to tell you how fast. Well, let me just say, I used to go over, over 105 in the 55. Okay. <laughs> And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I had passengers in the car, okay? Well, let me say a passenger. It was just me and, you know, somebody else. And it wasn't family either. So it's like, whoa, <laughs> this guy's life. And he was, I'm, I'm just like, yeah. Anyway, that was when I was, uh, the funny thing is I was a Christian, but I was, you know, Christians. Uh, anyway, I was a Christian, but I wasn't. No one told me, try obeying all the laws and you'll reveal yourself to you. No one told me that. It's just like something you just do. 55, no cops around, speed. No, the Bible talks about, uh, what's it called? Eye service. You're doing stuff because certain people are looking. Or you're doing stuff because certain people are not looking. That's not life, man. That's not, that's not Christianity. Look, I tell you, I'm just, these are many things, many things you can do, right? Change your diet for a week. Just see how, just, just, just see. Like, not some, oh, I cut out sugar. No, no, no. Oh, I'm just no chicken for the... No? 
Look up some healthy diet and force yourself to do it. Try it for a week. Not so you can, remember, not so you can lose weight or be more holy. It's so you can help yourself. If you, if you find out, okay, another thing that you can do is fast, right? That's another thing that's like, oh. And I ain't talking about fast and play video games all day. I ain't talking about fast and watch Netflix for seven hours. Uh, 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 uh. Fast and eat this food. Okay, do that. Because when you fill your mind with Netflix and video games, the time will fly. You know, oh, wow, it's already 8 p.m. <laughs> I only plan to go to 6. <laughs> no. Okay? Do some of these things, man. It'll just reveal yourself to you. It'll reveal yourself to you. And the diet, the diet, speed limit, all that stuff. Look, when you, if you, I said this a week ago or two, I don't know when. You, you, if you change your speed when the law's around, you know you're not doing something right. If you change your speed based on who's looking, you just look at yourself, WWJ, would Jesus do what I just did? I'm not trying to condemn y'all, okay? I'm not trying to, I used to, I told you I used to go 100, this is weekly. It's not, oh, one day I tried, no, 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 this is my lifestyle, okay? I took pictures while I was doing it too, of the speed. So it was just like, could have died. Anyway, thank God I didn't. I don't know, I, I would have went to heaven, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying there's a couple things you can do to uh, reveal yourself to you, okay? Look here. The gospel is this. We were all once sons and daughters, but then we left. We all left in Adam. And don't, 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 think, don't think, oh, well, Adam sinned. I didn't. You did. Okay. And don't think, well, Adam sinned. Don't think Adam sinned. No, all I got to do is live a better life. All I got to do is sin less. No, you should be sinless. No, not sin less. You need to be sinless. And the only way to do that is to give your life to someone who is sinless. Or you live sinless, which none of us have done. Okay? And the word of God lets us know, I think it's Romans 3.23 or 6.23. The wages of sin is death. Okay? The wages of sin is death. If Christ was coming tomorrow, you shouldn't change your life. If the law is coming, if the judge is coming tomorrow, you shouldn't change your life. If some people find out Christ is coming tomorrow, they change stuff up. Hey, no, I can't, I can't, I can't be with you anymore. No, this is over. No, we're, we're going to break up this relationship. I, no, no, no. Why? Because you know it's wrong. Okay? And then look. Look. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Okay? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And why is it, why is it saying in Romans 12 that I should renew my mind if all things become new? Well, the thing that becomes new is your spirit. Your mind's not new. Your mind is your decision because you still have to have a choice. God is not just going to be like, boom. You cannot sin again. You have no choice but to do good. That's not love, first of all. There's no option. I can't choose you. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Okay? Old things have passed away. Behold, behold, all things become new. And then we renew our mind daily and we become free. I told you I'm a serious person. Some of you guys, if you know me personally, you may know I'm serious. Um... And I joke a lot. Some I don't. I don't know if I joke a lot. Maybe I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, one thing I, I understood something. I learned something a while ago. You know, I used to think me being funny was uh, was not good. Cause I used to think I used to look at certain men of God, and they didn't make jokes. I'd be like, man, I'm not serious. I'm not serious. I need to change my life. 
And uh, then I learned, no, this is a gift. And the fact that I am serious and I still am funny, I, I believe is just so that I can tell you, you finna go to hell and you won't feel bad. Cause I won't, I won't say it. And I'm, t I've told people this, and we're not, not like you're going to hell. No, I've told them straight up, like, hey man, you, you on your way to hell, yo. And they won't offend it. You do that. Go tell somebody that you know is not living right, and you know is living in sin. They invite you to sin. You let them know they're going to hell. You see how hard it is, and it was easy for me. Shoot, I was, they, they knew I didn't have any hard feelings towards them. Just like, hey, you know, I make them laugh. I'm laughing and, and I'm just being real with them. Hey, man, you, you living like this? You finna burn, bro. Ain't no exits. Ain't no exits there, yo. Like, really, real talk, man. I was worse than you. You finna, you finna burn. And they're listening now. <laughs> they give their life to Christ. I mean, and I just understood, like, the whole funny stuff is just so they can feel comfortable or so that I can tell them stuff gracefully without them feeling like, oh, he's judging me. He doesn't know my life. He doesn't know my heart. You know, all these things that people say. And I understood that. And I, you know, embrace. I don't want to say embrace who you are because, you know, I don't know who you are. Um <laughs> Just if you have a gift, you know, make sure you use it for the Lord. It's not too late to change, fam. It's not too late. Look, 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 let me tell you. You know, the reason I talk about myself sometimes, or let me say maybe it's often, is because I learned years ago, the Lord showed me this. I told I showed y'all this. If I go up to you and I'm I'm about to take a I'm like like this to your face, you might be like, what the? Especially if it's a stranger. Um, excuse me. <laughs> uh, no consent. But if I hop in with you, like, hey, you might be like, hey, right? Because I'm in the picture with you. And sometimes you got to put yourself in the picture so people can feel comfortable. If I just talk to you all about what you should do, what you should do, what you should do, and I don't talk about myself, y'all might feel like I'm just pointing at you. You might be like, uh-uh, no, 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 talking to me. And so... Uh, yeah, you know, one time I, uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you how serious I am. I'm not going to tell you everything, but I'll tell you one thing. For two years, I didn't play basketball. Now, you might be like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> For 20 years, I haven't played. <laughs> okay, okay, but if you've played in middle school, high school, college, and you still play now, I play now. For me to, and I, and I stopped like, at, at, a, at a prime time. Okay, I didn't play basketball. I didn't watch basketball for two years. Now you imagine if you're a singer, let's say you're in a choir and you don't sing for two years. You don't pick up a basketball, you, I'm sorry, a microphone. You don't pick up a mic to sing. You don't even listen to worship. Well, that might be a little b bad, but you don't, you don't, as in your leisure, you don't listen to worship. For two years, I did that. A brother came to me. What are you doing, man? You got to stay relevant. That's not a brother, Christian brother. Yeah, what are you? That's that's extreme. And then years later, he's saying the same thing I'm saying now. It's like, oh, this stuff is not even it's vanity. You just telling me? Anyway, I did that for two years because I was like, I don't want any idols. I don't want to. I don't want to exalt something that's not supposed to be anything that I feel like I wake up early for, or I'll stay up early, I'll stay up late for, or I put effort towards. I was like, wait a minute, is this a snip? What do you like to do? Can you cut it off for a month? I did it for two years, fam. <laughs> People come ask me, have you seen the game? Oh, nah. No, what's the name just got drafted? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know who was in the Super Bowl. Rams and somebody. I don't even know who, but I, I, I'm not saying you should be like that. I'm just saying, like, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm focused on something else, man. Focus on something else. I'll tell you one more thing. 
I'm not trying to boast. I'm just trying to, you know, when you say stuff, people might be like, wow, and be encouraged, you know? I didn't eat food. <laughs> Let's stand up. We're going to pray. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I didn't eat food, fam. I fasted. I didn't eat food for over two months. I'm serious. I didn't eat food for over two months. All I did was drink stuff. And it wasn't so I could stay healthy. It wasn't, it wasn't that. I was just trying to get close to the Father. I was trying to grow. I'm not saying you have to do that, okay? I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying sacrifice. Do sacrifice, okay? Do your own sacrifice. Like, you, you, you know yourself. You know what you like to do. You know what you may hold on to. Is social media? A lot of people can't even put the phone down. Look here, it's not too late. All right? It's not too late. You ain't got to do what I do. Don't do that. Don't do, don't do what I do. Eat, okay? <laughs> Play basketball. But, don't, but you know what to do, all right? You know what you should do. You say, Father, help me be all in. You say, Father, help me be all in. Let me not be a hypocrite. You don't want some, some guy... Your, hub, your hubby to be half in over there desiring other women, but on certain days he focuses on you. You don't want your, your woman to be focused on other men, but then, but then you know, every once in a while she, she gives her attention to you. No. If you say you give your life to Christ, then what haven't you given him? Father, help me be all in. Help me sacrifice where I need to sacrifice. Help me sacrifice where I need to sacrifice. Help me grow. Help me be serious. Help me cut off the people I need to cut off. Help me unfollow the people I need to unfollow. And let's pray this last prayer. Father, show me the people in my life that are not helping me. Show me the friends that I have that are not good for me. Show me. Show me the shows I'm watching that are not good. Show me the music that I listen to that I should stop. Show me. In the name of Jesus. Father, help us. You love us. You want to show your love to us. There's so many things you want to do in our lives that we just don't see because we, we, we're not serious. Help us be serious. In Jesus' name. Amen.